public administration is significantly influenced by a number of theories, among these are classical theories, which includes the scientific management theory, the bureaucratic theory, and the administrative management theory. In this video, we'll only focus on the scientific management theory. Subscribe now, and let's talk about how this theory relates to public administration. Before we continue, please note that this video is a concise version of our previous video on this topic. So, for a detailed analysis on the other two classical theories, please watch this video. We'll leave a link in the description section below. And by the way, please show your support by clicking the like button. And don't forget to leave us a comment. Now, let's get into today's video on the scientific management theory. This theory was put forward by Frederick Winslow Taylor, who is also known as the father of scientific management. Taylor believed that by analyzing work in a scientific manner, it was possible to find the one best way to perform a task. He felt that by organizing work in the most efficient way, the organization's productivity would be increased, allowing it to reward employees with additional remuneration. Which Taylor argued that, this was employees' only motivation. Taylor further suggested the following four principles of scientific management. Firstly, Taylor emphasized analyzing work processes scientifically, rather than relying on intuition or tradition. He believed that, by breaking down tasks into smaller elements, organizations could optimize efficiency. Taylor also advocated for a careful selection, training, and continuous development of workers. This approach, aimed to match employees' skills with specific tasks and improve overall productivity. Taylor further believed in collaboration between management and workers. This means that, when both parties work together harmoniously, productivity is increased and everyone benefits. Lastly, Taylor proposed dividing tasks into specialized roles to enhance efficiency. This would ensure that each worker would focus on a specific aspect of the job, leading to an improved overall performance. Some of the key strengths of the scientific management theory are as follows. This theory replaces the old and traditional rule of thumb by using scientific techniques. It also has a proper selection and training method for workers. It establishes a harmonious relationship between workers and management. It further achieves equal division of responsibilities and duties and standardizes employment tools, equipment, and methods. Some of the other strengths of the scientific management theory include the fact that it gives detailed instructions while providing constant guidance to workers. The incentive wage system provided by this theory also helps for higher production. The theory further eliminates wastage and also satisfies customer needs by providing them high-quality product with minimum price. Before we continue, we'd like to take a quick moment to ask for your support. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up by clicking that like button below. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to our channel. By subscribing, you'll never miss out on our latest content. Remember, hitting that subscribe button is free, and it shows us that you appreciate what we do. Now that you've subscribed, let's get back to today's video. Taylor's scientific management theory, while influential, has attracted criticism for a number of reasons. Here are some of the key ones. Critics argue that Taylor's focus on efficiency turned workers into interchangeable parts, ignoring their well-being and reducing jobs to repetitive motions. The emphasis on time-based quotas and high output could also be stressful and lead to worker dissatisfaction. The scientific management theory further struggles to consider tasks that weren't easily quantifiable, limiting its application in some sectors. Taylor's assumption that workers are primarily motivated by money is seen as incomplete because it overlooks individual subjective motivation and the need for personal satisfaction from work. This oversight can lead to low job satisfaction, high absenteeism, and high turnover in certain roles. The system's hierarchical structure with multiple supervisors, is further viewed as cumbersome and potentially confusing for workers. We've come to the end of this video. As indicated, 
For a detailed analysis on the other two classical theories, please watch this video, under our channel. You can find the link, in the description section below. So, thank you for watching. And if you found this video insightful, please take time to check out our other videos, on public administration, public finance, the management of the public sector, including the running of government. And don't forget to like this video, and subscribe to our channel, for more content. And remember to turn on the notification button, to make sure that you don't miss out, when we post new videos. You can also connect with us, by following us on social media, at Consult Kano. And continue the conversation, by leaving us a comment, below this video. Or tagging us on social media, using the hashtag, Consult Kano. Thank you again for watching. Join us again next time, for another video. Until then, check out these other videos. Kano Consultants, for professional advice, you can trust.